Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is Fair Value Finder and today we are taking a look at another growth stock that recently started getting positive earnings, has some decent cash flow growth. So we're going to see, is it worth buying and what kind of growth prospects are we expecting from it? So today it's Uber Technologies, ticker U-B-E-R. Uh, tomorrow I plan to do Airbnb so we can see how that one is doing. So I'm coming up with a fair value, just shy of $50, around 49 and a half, and a discounted cash flow of $50. So to me, a good value for the stock would be 50 bucks. It's currently trading for 74. It's been as low as 29 and as high as 82 in the last 52 weeks. So that 29, those people are sitting pretty good. I mean, as you can see here, you're getting incredible returns. Uh, with the thesis that we're putting together here, if you buy at $29, that is below the margin of safety that we're looking for. Even at 34, you're getting really good returns out for three, four X market returns at these levels. But today it's 50% higher than the fair value. So hopefully we didn't miss out on it and it'll go back down or it upforms this thesis and uh, gives a reason for it to be so elevated. Earnings yield low, 2.23%, showing that it is currently pretty elevated for the price. We'd want $3.71 at least for the EPS for this valuation. And right now, we're looking at $0.93 cents last year. Uh, this year, analysts are expecting $1.36 and then $2.19 next year. So that three seventy one is probably a few years out. We're probably looking more on like a five-year time frame there. Cash flow yield was good this last year, 9.02%. Typically they're negative. Uh, they recently broke positive with their cash flows in 2022 and saw some massive growth in 2023. I mean, even from 2020 to 2021, things looked really good. They do not pay a dividend. ROE 16.77 looks great, but debt to equity is pretty high. So they do have quite a bit of debt uh, that is really inflating that number. ROI, looks like their investments didn't really pay off. They lost about 19.5%. And ROA, about 5%. Not bad, not great. A gross margin, just shy of 40%. Typically, they're doing around 44.5%. So there's definitely some room to get that gross margin up. But net margins, they came in at 5% when typically they're negative on those. So they've definitely done a lot to shore up their operations, which... Is something that we really like to see from a growth stock like this. Now that they're kind of done growing, starting to become profitable, uh, can they continue to get better? Revenue growth, incredible on the three year. It's been slowing down. Last year, it was just shy of 17. Analysts are expecting about 16.2 going forward. So we're going to stick with 16.25. Earnings per share growth. These are these show as negative because it was a negative number that was becoming less negative, but uh, they've been really good at growing that, showing that they're great at showing up those operations and uh, really driving cash flows. Uh, same story here for the cash flows. I mean, you can see the huge differences in all of those numbers. And then we have share count. They issued 2% of shares. And then this last year, it was about 3.3. So. I mean, hopefully they don't go back into the threes again, 2.5, kind of the midpoint in there. I, as I always say, at least hold it flat, but it'd be, be best if they could buy back some shares, especially with those excess cash flows that they're starting to see. A cash flow growth of 10% is nothing crazy with 16% revenue growth and 2.5% share buybacks. That takes them to 6.8% cash flow yield. This is kind of a very conservative case i think that they could probably at least hold what they have 9.02 so so maybe a 17 percent there getting up into the nines again assets they were losing assets and they got a lot more this last year so i'm not sure exactly where to go with that again if if we go midpoint in this range 10 percent 10% is pretty reasonable too. Uh, liabilities, 
they're consistently growing their debt, which is not something that we like, especially with a high debt to equity ratio. But you know, seven percent wouldn't be too bad if their assets are ten percent, and they don't pay a dividend. Margins, they're on a great track, getting those margins up. Ten percent would be amazing to see, and if they can get that gross margin up closer to fifty percent, that would be amazing. So with this as our thesis, we're looking at average annual returns of 27.12%. So obvious growth stock here. Buying at today's price, you're buying at 50% overvalued. And you're not going to end up with the best of returns. You know, it's it's looking decent in the five-year time frame. Not too great in the three-year time frame, but it's a growth stock. It trades at future multiples. It's trading at its three to five year valuation. So you calculate this again and see, I mean, if, if we're really assuming that it's trading at its three to five year valuation, we'd go the midpoint or so between uh, these two numbers here, which would be 75, exactly where it's trading at right now. And as long as they continue trading or as long as they continue with this massive growth that will continue to be continue to be true but if they can't fill those shoes they're going to fall back to a typical valuations and this is really what you'd be looking at this this is a much more conservative case even though you're underperforming in the three year a little bit i would not mind buying this thing around 50 and a half that fair value uh, usually i'm wanting to get it closer to that margin of safety but with 27% annual growth, uh, I'll make an exception. So with everything graphed out, this is what we're looking at. Earnings were negative, started to go positive, some nice linear growth there. The balance sheet, pretty flat. I mean, they're issuing assets and liabilities, and that's a place that they could definitely use some work. The fair value was kind of lagging back here, especially in 2022 when those earnings were really dragging them down, but it's starting to take the lead uh, along with those earnings. And then the actual share price has been pretty consistent up here and has started to go linear along with everything else. So what we're looking at here is some work on that balance sheet and those cash flows. And uh, this thing could definitely continue on a really good run with some incredible market beating returns. I'm not personally going to be buying it at the moment. I'll keep an eye on it. And if it goes down to $50, I will definitely be picking some up. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Please like if you enjoy the video. Comment what other stocks you like to see. And subscribe so you can stay up to date with everything. And I'll catch you next time.